Today we're going to have a look at Archicad 21. We're going to unbox it. I've just put it on my computer, so it will be interesting to see how it works. Um, hopefully it works the first time. That would be nice. And we're going to have a look at how to set it up. So in previous videos, we've looked at how to use previous versions of Archicad, and what we find when we open up a new version of Archicad every time, um, I literally just put this in, so I'm just going to say at the moment we're going to use this in demo mode. Uh, let's say, yeah, start demo mode. And then we can have a look at um, putting in the, the license number for a um, educational license a bit later. So what I want to do today is have a look at how the, the native version or the standard template in Archicad 21 works. So we're going to use the standard one here, Australian Archicad 21 template. And we're not going to use the latest project settings because uh, that would bring in from older projects. Uh, and we're going to use, you'll see that it's already brought in some of my previous um, video ones that I've created for version 20. But we're going to use, again, the standard type for 21 just so we see what it's like. And then straight away we're going to have a look at how to start to customize with the intention of creating your own Archicad template. Now with this series of videos that I'm going to create, I'm going to try to do them in short little bursts and so they'll all be under the title of Archicad 21 template setup uh, and we'll look at different elements of creating a template for each one at the moment. Let's press no. This is pretty common what we see in Archicad. Now you see that my screen, uh, my resolution and therefore my size is quite small because I'm also projecting this while I'm creating a video. Um, the screen size of the re resolution is fairly small and it's sort of good to see how much space can very quickly be taken up or we could call it screen real estate so we don't have a lot of room left to draw with so we're going to have to try to do whatever we can to to make that better now I'm really glad in version 21 we've got the navigator on the right hand side here that's already docked it's in place and it's um it's not hiding. Of course, we could choose to hide Navigator if we wanted to as well, but I quite like seeing it there. Down the bottom here, we have our renovation filter. Now, I hate renovation filter. It's the bane of my Archicad existence, and so many of my students all struggle with um, renovate, renovation filter overriding what they do. So we're gonna make sure that at the moment it says show all elements and I'm pretty much never going to use it apart from maybe having to fix it in order to be able to show all elements. So for now we'll just get rid of that. We're going to click that, close that down so it's removed and we're going to look at the different palettes and toolbars that we have on our screen to try to make sure that our screen is as clean as possible. Now this is slightly redone from version 20. There's not all that much difference. The biggest changes that we see in Archicad 21 is a new stair tool. From all the videos that Graphisoft has put out, this is supposed to really make our life fun, really make the stairs a lot more interactive, intuitive. And we have a railing tool, which of course is meant to work with our stair tool. Other than that, it's mostly the same. And we can, of course, resize this. So I'm going to slim this down a little bit just so it's um, as narrow as possible. I'm going to expand all of them as need be. Now, what does this mean? Select is our arrow tool and our marquee tool. Design is generally the, the common 3D tools because Archicad is a BIM program. So we build with 3D tools and then we use our documentation tools such as our section tool, elevation tool, interior elevation tool, and then our detail markers to be able to produce two-dimensional drawings of our 3D information modeling, building information model. And then of course there are, under more, some more 3D tools and some more 2D tools that we might use, but I guess the intention is that we're not gonna use them as commonly and that's why they're under more. Great. Now. 
this, what we can see on the screen at the moment is a few different elevations, elevation markers and section markers. And why do they look different to ones that I've used in the past? Because this is Archicad standard ones. Now we can change these, we're going to change these, but for the moment I don't really care that they're there, I don't want to use them. So I'm going to select them, I'm going to delete them all. Now we don't have anything in this drawing at the moment, there's not much stuff, so it doesn't matter that we do that. And that also meant that you'll see that up the top of my screen I've now got less of these boxes. I've now only got a ground floor drawing or a window and a 3D window. And we'll see that there's nothing in the window because we haven't drawn anything. But the other one's deleted because they were elevations which were created by those elevation markers. Again, elevations of nothing, but elevations there already. In our navigator, uh, just for those who are brand new to Archicad, we have our project map. Now I call this the the dumb information or the unintelligent information. So this is where we draw, this is where we place our model, but it doesn't have many inbuilt settings in that once we've created it, we can then save our saved view. So we've got our project map, then we've got our view map. It's not coming up with the little pull up to make that easy. There we go, view map, or we could call this our saved views. And then finally, we've got our layout book. So we go drawing information without intelligence, drawing information with intelligence or with settings, with saved settings, and then we can place that onto our layouts, which of course is a, a drawing. So we're going from a 3D environment to a saved views, could be floor plans, elevations, or 3Ds, and then we place them onto a layout or a piece of paper. Now finally, the last one here is publisher sets, and that's effectively once we go from our layout, once we want to create maybe PDFs or DWGs, that's one way to do that. Now if we go to our project chooser, this little box here, I generally don't use the publisher sets here. Uh, it's sometimes a bit hard to understand how it works. What I tend to do is use this method here to say show organizer, and the show organizer gives us a split screen where we could then potentially drag from our layout book into our publisher sets. So that I find that's just a better, simpler way of working. And the options here are already quite vast. So we have export to ICF, IFC models, um, export layouts to PDFs, print. So there's lots of ones set up. Now what I'm going to show you today is how to delete a lot of these or to edit a lot of these to make them the way that you want. Now it's great that Archicad produces templates for us and it's great that they have all this information. Again, personally, I just find it's too much information to manage and it doesn't necessarily work the way that I want to. And of course, you might want to customize uh, the, the layouts, the save views, the settings and the title blocks that you have here. So this is the standard view. I haven't changed very much. There's a few tools here. Uh, ideally, I'd love to be able to reduce this toolbar that we have along the top. This is our standard toolbar. How do I know that? Just from using a lot. But if we go to Windows, Toolbars, Palettes, we can see that the ones that are ticked are the ones that are on our screen. So there's still more that we could turn on and of course we can create our own as well. We can create our own toolbars. So in the next video we'll have a look at how to create our own toolbars and how to edit more of the existing toolbars. At the moment all we've done is to delete some of them but how do we actually edit them? That's the end for this video. Just a very quick explanation of how Archicad is set up in version 21. And in the next video, we'll have a look at how to start um, understanding a lot of the settings behind our templates and then how to start to customize our own templates.